Hi, Kevin. So I've already pushed it to live stream, but I'll also be with you throughout the class. So if you could mute your co-host, thank you. Hello, everyone. Hey, Mary. Hey, Valerie. Hello. Hey, Jen, Kathy, Lorraine, Frank. Hello. Frank. There's Jen. How are you, Jen? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. We'll let some other people join us here. Everybody enjoying their Monday? So yes. far, so good. <laughs> Hi, Lorreen, Ann, and Donna, Kathy. How are you guys? Hello. Hey. We'll wait another minute or so and we'll get started. We've got a few more people joining us. Everybody know how to turn their cameras on, their audio on, all that kind of stuff. Love to see your faces. There's no bad hair days. We're just here to see your smiles. No, no judging here. I am going to be listening because I'm driving. Well, that's probably a good idea. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> Safe. Got a couple more, couple more people coming in. Anybody, this is their first Get Set Up class. No, everybody's everybody's a veteran Get Set Upper. You guys have any favorite classes? Any favorite classes? Maybe this will be one of your favorites then, if you don't have one. 
All right, let's get started. Very good. This class is how to safely sell your stuff from home, right? That what you guys signed up for? Good, good, yes. good. All right. Um, I teach a lot of classes. This is what I've taught for quite a while. It's a real popular class. It's a real practical class. Uh, make a distinction though. If you're trying to sell stuff like in a store online, I've got other classes for that. Those are more e-commerce type stores. I can help you get those set up. This is more, you've got stuff around the house where you wanna sell, that kind of thing. So all of this is free. This part here is all free. There's no cost to you to list and there's no cost to you to sell, which is good, just some of your time. All right, uh, I am Kevin and I live in Tampa, Florida. I love the sun and the water and the heat and all of that. We got plenty of that here. Uh, I love lifelong learning to help people learn. So Get Set Up's a great fit for me. I get to see uh, a lot of great folks like you all. I think we learn best from each other and learning should be fun and shared together. So please turn your cameras on if you can, because uh, I like to see your faces. It makes it more rewarding for me. So I'm not teaching myself. Uh, you guys are always, uh, it's good to, you can stay on mute, that's fine, but uh, it's good to see your faces. If uh, you want a recording of any of these classes, you can email help it get set up and you, we don't get paid to promote any of these things that we're sharing with you that we just want to help you learn how to use them. All right, so here's the agenda. We're going to talk about the benefits of selling online. I'm going to recommend two or three platforms and then some ways to list your items and get things sold. Some secrets and tricks that I've learned along the way. Anything else you want to, you're hoping to learn in this class? Anybody else have anything else they'd like to learn? Anybody? No? I'm just going to sponge up whatever I give you. Jen, you got something? I'm sure I'll have questions afterwards. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah. If you guys have questions as we go along, feel free to jump in. All right. So uh, I start off with this premise that we all have a stuff problem. We all have too much stuff. We collect stuff. We inherit stuff. We are given stuff. We hoard stuff, okay, we buy stuff we don't even use, it's crazy. There's, you ever find that like box of something like you bought, you never ever opened it? Like, what did I, why did I spend money on this? I didn't really ever use it. It's kind of funny. Um, all you gotta do is look around your closets, your attics, your garages, your storage units, yard sheds, cabinets under your bed. There's stuff all over the place. And if you've lived anywhere a long time, you have more stuff because stuff seems to grow when you stay somewhere a long time. If you ever try to downsize or move, you really are faced to deal with your stuff. And I think in every house, there's different categories. There's junk that you need to throw away. There's that stuff. There's stuff you can donate to somebody else. And there's stuff that you can sell that has value that you can sell to people. So I'm not against donation and I'm not against throwing stuff away, but there is stuff that uh, you could sell. The trick is putting it in front of the right people and uh, get it sold. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So traditional, oh, let me tell you a quick story. In Florida here, we uh, have this problem where we don't have basements because we're at sea level and we can't put anything in the attic because it's just way too hot up there. Things just get destroyed in our attic. So we do this crazy thing where we put stuff in our car, or our truck, we drive across town, we put it in somebody's storage unit. We pay them money every month to store our junk in their storage units. And months go by and they keep taking our money and we never go use that stuff. And one day we wake up and go, why am I paying for stuff I don't use? It's really silly. So I had two storage units for a long time and I finally said, that's it. I could have replaced everything in there by what I'm paying for this storage unit. So I put a, made a mission to sell everything out of it and I did. I can't tell you how happy I was the day I was able to close out my second unit and not have to pay that guy anymore for stuff I wasn't using. So uh, storage units are, are kind of a tell there that uh, there's big business in storage units. Traditionally, we've used garage sales to sell stuff. Um, we've kind of, um, you know, used garage sales, they weren't bad, but now these new neighborhoods, our homeowners association say you can only have one garage sale or two garage sales a year. Everybody has to have it on the same weekend. It's not always convenient. Or if you live somewhere more rural or away from people, then you have to somehow get people to your house to buy stuff, which is tricky. You got to set it up. You got to take it down. It's time consuming. You have the people show up at the crack of dawn. They want first pick before you even open yet. And then you got the dear lady down the street who is I think she's helping you out and you've got the hundred dollar family heirloom vase listed for like forty dollars you know it's worth hundreds and she says sweetie i'll give you 35 cents for it out of her change purse and you think are you kidding me i cannot let this go for 35 cents i know it's worth way too much so you have those casual shoppers you don't quite value what you have in that all right before we start 
uh, into some of the details of this. I'm curious what kind of stuff you guys have to sell. What What is it you're, you're thinking, hey, what could you sell? Just unmute yourself and tell us what you have to sell. Knickknacks. Knickknacks, okay. Clothes. Electronics. Electronics, clothes, okay. Books. Books. Lots Somebody of say? books. Books, okay. Treadle sewing machine. A sewing machine, okay. Anybody else have anything? All right. Sometimes people start All bargaining right in, right in class here. It's kind of funny. Like, oh, I want that. I want that. They want to trade. They want to swap their stuff. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we all know that online shopping and selling has gotten really big, right? It's retail therapy and online shopping therapy, and it's gotten really easy to, to sell, to buy things uh, online. Some of it is because you can shop from your own home or your phone. You don't even have to be at home. You can be on your phone and do it. Uh, our cameras take really good, our, photo, our phones take really good pictures of stuff and we can sell it that way. You can reach a larger targeted audience through technology, online shopping, than just having people come to your house. And you can agree on a price. Sometimes that's the scariest part for people. They don't want to negotiate. They don't want to have to haggle with people. Some people love that, but most people struggle with that part of it. So uh, those are some advantages of shopping uh, online. And so I wanna share with you two platforms to sell stuff on. These are the two best ones that I recommend. There's many others, but these are the two that I'd recommend for just selling things kind of out, out of your house. Facebook Marketplace, which is free with Facebook. You have to have a Facebook account to use it and you have to have a Facebook account to buy on it. And then OfferUp, it's free also. It's just a place for people to list things. There's a marketplace there and you have to have an account to buy and sell on that, but it's free as well. Why don't I mention other places like Craigslist? Well, Craigslist is not very well monitored. It's not very safe. You're not sure who you're dealing with. People can, you know, there's a lot of scam on that you could do. You could sell on it, I have, but I wouldn't recommend people to do that. Uh, the other one is um, Nextdoor is, a, is a, an app that some communities have. Uh, if you know what Nextdoor is and your neighborhood uses it, then you could use it, the same principles I'm sharing with these two apps on that app. The reason I don't really go deep into Nextdoor is not every community uses Nextdoor. It's kind of a private Facebook for your community. But if you know what I'm talking about, then these apply to Nextdoor as well. I recommend these two because they're safer than the other platforms. And I'll show you some, some ways they're a little bit safer, okay? All right, now let me give you some online selling tips, then we'll go into both of these platforms and I'll show you how to use them, okay? All right, first thing is I would recommend you take several quality photos of your product. Um, it's easiest to post your items just through your phone because you're gonna take the pictures with your phone most likely. And then instead of having to take pictures with your phone and then go back to your computer and then put them in your computer and then upload them that way, it's a little bit of a pain. You can, but it's easier to do it from your phone. So take a bunch of good pictures of your item. This is important because this is how people see what it is you're selling. And you can list 10 photos on Photoshop on, on Facebook, and you can list 12 photos on OfferUp of the item. Now, if you're selling books, you might not need 10 pictures of a book, but maybe front cover, back cover, spine, that's probably okay. But if you're doing an electronic device, you know they wanna know what plugs and outlets and size and front and back and all of that. If it's furniture, they definitely wanna know the size of it. Sometimes it's helpful to take pictures to show scale. One of the examples I use, you know those wire dog crates, those black wire dog crates that fold down that you can take? They make those in like five to seven sizes. So you don't know, just looking at a picture, if it's for a Chihuahua or a Great Dane, you have no idea. So like show it collapse, show it set up, set it up next to something big, something small. Let, it, let people get kind of a feel of what size the item is. So photos are good. If there's something wrong with the item, show that too. I use the example. I had this pine dining table that I uh, bought and we had an English bulldog puppy years ago. And, you know, it's cute when your dog's the one making the mess, but it's not cute when somebody else's dog does it. But he liked the little dog, our little dog liked to chew on the foot, one of the foot feet of the dining room table. And so there's like these teeth marks. On it. So I took a picture of that and put that in there. So people would know, you know, you don't want them showing up thinking they're getting this thing in perfect condition. They show up and they go, oh, well, I didn't know that that thing was all chewed up. And then they want to bring the price down on you. So just be honest and show them that. Write descriptions that sell. Um, you can't say too much. I mean, people get lazy and they don't put a good description, right? We're going to pretend like we're a buyer and we run through this. And you're going to see it helps to you become a better seller by understanding how buyers think. As a buyer, you want to know the details of what it is you're looking at. Like, what are the dimensions? 
When people buy single pieces of furniture, they absolutely want to know the dimensions because they have a specific place in mind where to put it and they've got to know if it's going to fit. They might fall in love with what it looks like, but it might not be the right size. So put the dimensions in there. Otherwise, you they may pass on your talking to you about it because they don't want to ask you the question. Uh, but if they know the size and they know it fits, then they're more likely to reach out to you to see if it's available and uh, check into it. You know, is it been in a house where somebody smoked? Are there pets in the house? You know, people have allergies. They want to know, is this thing going to, you know, I'm going to have trouble as soon as I get it home. Uh, is it rusted? Is it dented? Is it, you know, all those kind of things. Just put, put it all in the description. Price it fair to sell. How do you know what's fair to sell? I have two rules. One, can I go to sleep at night having sold it for that amount? Like there's a, a number in my head that like, okay, if it sold it for that, it'd be fine, right? That, I'm okay with that. And then the other thing is you can do a little bit of research. You can search that specific item you're selling on other platforms or on, on these platforms and see if somebody else is selling it and get an idea what they're pricing it for. I'll give you an example of that when I do my example posting. Responding quickly and honestly, this may be the most important thing to, of you selling or not because every buyer in America is pretty much an impulsive, impatient buyer. When they see something they like, they wanna buy it right then. If they can't get it right then, they go look for somebody else that can sell it to them right then. So one of the most common questions people ask when they find something they like is, is it available? The reason they ask that question is because people are horrible at marking things sold once they're sold. So they don't wanna get excited about something that's not available. Is it available? If I respond quickly to that, now I have that person's interest and I can continue the conversation. If I don't respond, they're gonna go looking for somebody else's offering. That's just how it works. So you can respond on your phone. You get notified through the app when somebody's interested and you can have your phone. So you don't have to sit at your computer for days and days and days. You can have it, your phone on and it'll work, okay? All right, the other list of safety tips are this. Do all your communication inside the app. So inside Facebook Marketplace, you can use Facebook Messenger, which is kind of an instant chat inside there. You don't have to give them your phone number, your email, your address or anything. All of that's done safely inside. You know who's communicating with you and because they have to have a Facebook account. Same with OfferUp. They have an inside the app communication tool, so you don't have to share a phone number or anything like that. Only take cash. You can take a cashier's check, but don't take a personal check. Those will bounce. Those are, you know, people write those no, no, no money in the bank. Gift cards is another scam. They'll say, hey, here's a $100 gift card. You get you go home and check the balance. It's got 35 cents on it. There's nothing left in it. So don't do that. You, uh, I do say that um, Cash App and Zelle and Venmo and PayPal, those are safe ways to transfer money also if you have those accounts. They're free accounts that you can set up and transfer money through those platforms. Okay, then you want to meet at a safe location for exchange. Where would that be? Well, one of my rules is I never let anybody in my house. They never come in my house. I've met them on the front porch, in the driveway. You know, I've met them at the storage facility. Our storage, the storage units have lots of lights and lots of cameras, so that's a safe place. I've met at gas station parking lots, grocery store parking lots, um, bank parking lots, clubhouses. I've met at fire stations, police stations, wherever you wanna go, you can do those things. And you know, I typically do it in the daytime, not at night. If it's furniture, I get it, you can't move it real easily. If you're trying to sell furniture, you maybe you need to put it in your, in your garage or your driveway and have them look at it that way. That's that's a safer way to do it. But um, you know, you can take somebody with you when you go exchange. I've never had a weird buyer. I've only had weird sellers when I was trying to buy something. <laughs> when they wanted me to come to their house. I said, I'll meet you in the McDonald's. And they said, okay. And then they didn't go to the McDonald's. And I said, if you're not here in five minutes, I'm leaving. They said, oh, something came up. You need to come to the house. I said, I'm not going to your house. I already told you that. And I went home. So I always say, if it feels or seems odd, just pass on it. But never had any trouble with any buyers. All the buyers have been good. Any questions on these? Yeah. So you're saying it's not safe to have it meet at your place of residence at all? You can. You can. So what I do is I've, I kind of, I'll show you how you can kind of vet out who the buyers are when they're interested to see if, you know, if you're scared by them or not, if you want to respond to them or not, I can show you that a little bit. That's one of the advantages of using these two platforms is you can kind of see who the buyers are. Mm -hmm. And I do that. I check into that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's a thing called porch pickup. If you can agree on the price, and they agree they're going to buy it, you can leave it on your porch and they can pay you electronically and then they just come pick it up. You don't even have to see them. Mm. 
but that assumes they're going to just buy it as is. Like, right? I mean, most, most all these sales are as is, right? There's no refund. This is not a, you know, you're not a store where they can bring it back with a receipt every 30 days. It's that's not all this stuff. You know, it's like garage sale stuff. You're selling it. Okay, so the goal is then have interesting products, good photos, clear descriptions, fair prices, and prompt responses to uh, put it out there. All right, so let's look at, uh, I'm going to get go on Facebook on the computer first, and then we'll do it on a phone to show you what that looks like. Any questions while I pull this up? I gave you a lot there. Do you ever ship? I don't, I don't, I don't. Cause it's a pain, right? Most of us live in a pretty big area where there's you know, a million people within an hour of your house that can, you only need one person to come buy it. So you can, and Facebook will offer shipping but they wanna make money on that. I'm not gonna get into that. I don't do that in, the class, in this class and offer up has shipping too, but all of the things I'm showing you don't cost you anything. You can do shipping on your own too, with, through Facebook. You can arrange with, with the seller or the buyer, I mean, and say, hey, this is what's going to cost to ship and go. So I don't, I mean, I. some people want you to deliver. The only time I've delivered is when I've actually had a trailer and I had stuff, had ability to deliver it, you know, because I happen to have a trailer at the same time I was moving something. For the most part, I don't do um, any of that. Just, all right, so let me share. Thank you. Let's see, it's a good question. Let's share. All right. Can you see my Facebook? All right. So I'm in Marketplace, right? I, I want to, this is home. If you go down over here, this little store is called uh, Marketplace. The top. If you do it on, a, on your iPhone or your phone, it's on the bottom, but it's a little store called Marketplace. Okay. So in here, I can search the whole Marketplace just by putting a word in there. Uh, let's say I'm looking for a... Um, what do we want to look for today? Let's look for a golf cart. All right, I search golf cart. Now, oh, I got to change my filter. I was in a different location. So I can change my filter uh, to my location. I'm going to put in uh, three, three, five, 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 six, if I can type. And um, Odessa. All right, and I can pick a radius. How big a radius do I want to search items from here? So 11 miles, let's go 20 miles out. Okay, so that means that whole area there. All right, okay. So I'm searching golf carts within 20 miles of where I live. Now I want to change my delivery method to just local pickup. I don't want anybody that'll ship because there's people, you know, that'll try to sell me stuff shipping. I don't want to ship. All right, so now it filters down to that. And I can put a price range if I want into. Okay, so these are all in local cities here that I can look at. All right, now let's find one that I'm interested in looking at. Wow, look at that leopard one. That's a bit much there. That's, let's see. How about this guy? Let's look at this guy. All right, we'll click on this one. All right, this is their listing. It tells me it's a 2004 easy go $3,500 it's in the vehicle category and it's been on there for eight weeks, so it hasn't sold. It's been on there a while either it's already sold and hasn't marked been marked sold or it's there's you know there's a reason it hasn't been bought yet, so I could probably talk them down. Uh, they said good batteries comes with charger runs good no problems has a back seat that's all they said they could have said more right I would have liked to know a little bit more about it um what else they got some pictures they got that picture that picture not bad right but maybe they should have showed me like the battery compartment like that'd be interesting to see like if i took the seat off and i could see the batteries right uh the, the condition of the tires maybe right um but not bad, I mean, but they only used five pictures. They have five more they could have taken. So there's no harm in taking more pictures. All right, now it tells me who the seller is. It's Dan Corletto. And it says he has been on Facebook since 2012. So he didn't just create this to sell it. So he's a real person. 
And based on what his settings are in his profile, I can go see about him. So I'm going to click on his name. He's a big Lightning fan, so I already like him because our our hockey team is in you know the Stanley Cup playoffs right now. So I already like him because he's Stanley, he's, he's a hockey guy. And it also told me he's in a bike club that I'm in too, which I don't know who he is, but he happens to be a, probably a biker too. Okay. And so here's some of the stuff that he's posted. All right, not a lot in there he's sharing, but there's some things, okay? And it looks like a normal guy. It doesn't look like anything weird. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not scared off by this guy. So I'd be, I'd be willing to buy from him there. But what I wanna do, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna send him a message. So right here, I can send him a, a and by default, Facebook says, hi, is this available? Cause that's the most obvious question. And I, I can hit send. So I'm gonna send this message to him. I click send and it's gonna start a, a message with him. All right. So now he's this one right here. Let me close these guys. All right, we're going to see if how long it takes him to respond. Maybe he hasn't sold it because he doesn't ever respond. That'd be a reason, right? It's like if I'm looking at these, how long am I going to wait for him to respond? I might go look at another one and see, see if somebody else will respond too. So we'll see while we're doing class if he responds. All right, now let's go back and let's make our own listing, okay? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on create new listing. Do you see this? It's create new listing. And we are going to do an item for sale. You have to pick one of these four. So you just say item for sale. And now it wants your pictures first. So I can upload pictures or drop and drag them from here. So I'm going to grab the pictures real quick. It's not showing you my uh, computer, right? You can't see the pictures. Let's see. Oh. I've got three pictures. I should have 10, but I don't even, I don't really even have this product. So I'm just pretending with this sample product. Okay. So I uploaded these pictures, whatever one you put in the first spot is the one they see in the marketplace. And then when they drill into it, they can see all of them. Right. So I'm going to drag this one over here. You can reorder it. So that's, that's kind of my cover page there. I want that to be there and you can add more pictures. All right. So let's give it a title. I'm going to call it vintage, vintage, you know, it's, metal lunchbox how much should this cost any ideas 15 bucks 15 all right let me give you a little trick here okay i'm going to copy that title and i'm going to go to google and i'm going to put that title in here and i'm going to search it and then i'm going to click up here on shopping see shopping up here and it's going to give me these items with some prices. This one's 70. Try to find another one of the same one. 25. Is that the same one? I think so. 30, 27, 25. All right, how about 25? Sound good? So I got an idea. You can also go to eBay and see what people are buying and selling for as well. So just search to see kind of what is right, right? So let's say I put 25 in here. Now I can pick a category. You can put every item into one category. If you want to put it in multiple categories, you have to list it multiple times, but it only lets you do one at a time, one category at a time. So I'm going to put it into collectible toys and that's good condition. It's going to be use good condition and description. Okay. Metal, lunchbox, no dance, dents, light, scratches, no mold. What else do they want to know? Class works, plastic, thermos included, clean. I should spell it right. And maybe the dimensions, 10 inches by, I'm guessing, something like that. All right. Okay. Uh, brand, I don't have to put a brand that's optional. Date range is optional. SKU is optional. All right. This is a nice little feature. Why, why is Hide from Friends on here? Mm -hmm. Regifting. Regifting, yes. Your sister-in-law gives you a 
present for your birthday, you don't like it. So you're out selling it on Facebook and you don't want her to see it. So you have to hide it from your friends. That's the most common reason to hide it. The second one would be uh, if you're a really generous person and a friend responds, they're interested in your item and you feel like you can't charge them for it, you end up giving it to them for free. <laughs> That's happened to me. I tried to sell a TV one time. My wife said, your friend wants that. You can't sell it to him. You have to give it to him. Okay. He can have it for free. So up to you to do that. All you do is toggle that on and off and it does it. Okay. All right. I then you did, hit next. I Go did ahead. that too. I gave an ice maker to a friend I wanted to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You they, they test our generosity, right? <laughs> okay. Uh so the next thing, uh now the delivery method. And I leave it just on local, just my local area. Um, you can get into the shipping here. I'm not gonna cover it in this class, but Facebook makes money if you get into shipping with them. They, they make a cut on it too. I, I, again, if you live in a big enough market, you got enough people around you, somebody's gonna buy it. They, you don't have, or you can handle the shipping yourself. So you hit next. All right, this is the real magic of it right here. This is what will separate you from selling stuff and not selling stuff. So in Facebook, there are a thing called groups. And groups come in different shapes and sizes. There's groups that allow you, there's public groups and private groups, number one. There are also groups that allow you to post things to sell and there are groups that have rules that say you cannot post things to sell. So all the groups that allow people to post things to sell, you can uh, attach your listing into those groups if you're a member of that group. You have to first be a member of the group. So again, if they're public, they're easy to join. If they're private, you just have to answer a few questions and then they'll let you in. But once you join a group, they'll show up on this list and uh, they'll also show you some recommended groups down here, possibly. So every one of our neighborhoods has a thing called a, a buy, sell, trade, swap meets, classifieds, um, online garage sales. All of your neighborhoods have those. Your communities have those. So you can join those. And it tells you like this one's got almost 30,000, 29,500 people in it. It's a pretty big group. Some are bigger than others. And let me give you an example of why this is really good. So I tell you this story. I uh, used to race triathlons and I had some carbon fiber wheels. They were $1,000 wheels, uh, 500 for the front, 500 for the back. And a friend had given them to me. They didn't cost me anything. And I rode on them for years. They broke the back one, never got it fixed. And so I had this spare front wheel laying around my garage. And I finally said, I just want to sell this. I don't need to keep it in my garage anymore. So I went on and I joined some of these cycling groups that allow you to have buy, sell, trade, cycling items, okay? And I listed that item and that front wheel in there for $45. It was an absolute steal because it was worth hundreds of dollars, not 45. And because I put it in those groups, I had people from all over wanting to buy that wheel. They were willing to pay shipping. They were willing to do all kinds of stuff because they were in these groups. And uh, I sold it really fast. It would be like crazy how fast I sold it. Now, let's use the same example if I would have gone and had a garage sale in my neighborhood. And I put that wheel out in my driveway and I put a price tag of $45 on that. Do you think that anybody in the world in my neighborhood is going to pay me $45 for a wheel? No, because they don't understand those, those wheels or carbon wheels and what they're worth, right? It's the wrong crowd. So the whole key of selling something is putting what you have in front of the people who value what it is you have. These groups allow you to do that. So maybe you join, if you've got books, you join some book reading groups. So that your book readers, they would like those books more so than just the average person who doesn't read. If you have antiques or trinkets or collectibles or furniture or whatever your thing is, you join some groups like that and then you post your items. Facebook allows you to list it into up to 20 groups for listing. So you just come through and you start just clicking out which groups you want to put it in. Even if you list your item, you can come back, join the groups, edit your item and add it back later. You can add the groups at any time. You don't have to do it right when you list it. Okay, all right. So I don't really have this and I uh, don't wanna put it in any groups because I don't want anybody to get excited about it. So let's hit publish. You can see it previewed over here on the right side as it did. All right, so it's in here and um, it's out there, okay? Nobody's looked at it. So this one, I had seven viewings a few weeks ago. Tells you how often people look at things. Usually I turn it off pretty quick, but it keeps record of all the things that I've sold. Here's that TV I ended up giving away. Didn't make my $45 because my friend picked up. My friend saw it. I forgot to hit hide from friends, but he got a free TV. By the way, TVs, nobody wants a tube TV. You can't even give away a tube TV. You can, give, you can list things for free on here too and people come pick it up. 
Uh, nobody wants a tube TV. If it's a flat screen, you can sell that. They'll buy those. Mattresses, nobody wants any mattresses that have anything on them. If there's any stains whatsoever, nobody will want it ever, free or paid. They won't want it. Take that to the dump. If it's clean, you can sell it or give it away. Uh, screen doors. I got, you know, I didn't need these screen doors, so somebody wanted them. I put the dimensions out there and they got them. I sold a boat, some furniture. Let me tell you the story, though, about uh these chaise lounges at christmas time so we got some new patio furniture and my wife said hey we just put those two chairs out on the street and somebody will pick them up for free so are you kidding me i'll sell those things i'm not giving those away for free so i listed them real quick on facebook marketplace and i sold them that day okay now we were pretty heavy in, in corona covid time at, at the time and let me show you how this went okay so this keeps track of all this so i put i listed it in 10 different uh groups you can see here two of them for 40 for 35 dollars. this is what it looked like okay so i took that picture that picture the back i took the pads off of it right i mean i showed you about all i need i didn't need a whole lot of pictures but i kind of covered everything right with or without the pad the pads are probably worth more than the chairs <laughs> so uh two for 35 um two outdoor chase lounges comfortable blue pads included and i Put it out there all right so what happened this is what uh this person she messaged me first she says is it available we're interested they live in oldsmar i say that's yeah, available can you pick up today where are you located i gave them my community i don't give out my address right away i give out my community because really what they want to know is how long is it going to take to drive there they don't need your address yet they're just still interested how long is it how far away are you uh, and then I said, it's pending pickup. What does that mean? That means somebody else is on their way to get it. You don't want to tell people it's sold until it's really gone. Because what happens is people change their mind. They don't show up. And you want to keep people who are interested, interested until it's really gone. So you can tell somebody it's pending pickup, meaning, hey, there's interest in this. You get second dibs if it, it falls through. And then when it was sold, I was nice enough to tell them it was, it was sold. Now, what about the person that bought it? This is how the conversation went with Alex. Alex said, hey, I'd like to pick these up. When would be a good time? I said, how about uh, now? <laughs> how about right now? Like, I take advantage of it because, you know, they're impulsive, right? People are impulsive. When they're interested, they're interested. They're not going to make a change their mind tomorrow. He goes, sure. What's the address? He says, he lives in Trinity. I'm in Astoria. I said, we're close. So it's on the same, same road. He said, is there a gate code? No gate code. Are you coming now? Yeah. What's the address? I'm headed that way. Now, I gave him this address. You don't have to do this. This is close to my address, but it's not quite my address. <laughs> I changed a few numbers. You're like, well, Kevin, why do you have to do that? Well, I knew I was going to have these out on the driveway and he would see them. So if I got him on my street, he would see it. And I gave him a different address because if he didn't come, then he wouldn't have my address. Just a little trick I do. You don't have to do that. I got him, in the, I got him there. It all worked out fine. Mm -hmm. But I never get out an address until I know they're on their way. That's when I give out my address or I tell them where we're going to meet. He said, I'll be there in 21 minutes. Okay. I said, I'm staying COVID safe. I'll keep a good distance. See you soon. He says, okay. And then when he's about to pull up, he told me, this is all inside the Facebook app. I didn't have to give him my email, my phone number, or anything else. This is all inside Facebook Messenger. So he pulls up in his pick truck, pickup truck with his wife. Uh, he sees them on the front in the driveway. I point to them from a garage and he throws them in the back of his truck. He starts to walk up to me with some money in his hand. I said, hey, just put it on the bumper of my car, which was parked in the driveway. He said, great, thanks. I said, enjoy them, have a great day. And he drove off. So I went and checked the, what he, the money he left me and he left me 220. So I actually made 40 bucks rather than 35. <laughs> and we were COVID safe. And in, within a few hours, I had sold these Chase lounges. But the key to it was putting them in those groups so people locally could see uh, where they were as they go there and they find it. All right. Now, our friend here has not responded about the uh, golf cart. That's probably why he hasn't sold it in <laughs> in eight weeks because he doesn't respond. I mean, how could I buy it if he doesn't respond to me, right? It's just taking way too long. All right. Any questions on this so far? All right. Your quiet group. Your quiet group. Such you, have help, you have helped me think of a whole lot of more stuff I could sell, though. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I'll show you some other stuff that's on the list here. Uh, some of this was in storage, as you can tell, electronics. Here's that um, dog crate. Here's that pine table. More electronics. Here's that wheel. 
or electronics. So he keeps track of all of it. Sewing machine. Somebody was selling a sewing machine. This is still in the box. Refrigerators, bikes. How about this one? An autographed Chicago poster. The, the group Chicago. <laughs> I sold it for 15 bucks. Like, that's awesome. I think that actually sold an offer up. Sometimes I list them in both. All right, let's jump over. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do it from your phone. So if we go back here. Uh, it's frozen. You see it frozen? I don't, uh, he's not moving. I think he froze. Yeah. Hi everyone, uh -oh. this is Kim. I'll I'll check with Kevin right now, okay? I'll I'll email him right away. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it's something to do with his internet. Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back. Good info so far. Yeah. Lots of little tricks using um, Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. I never thought of doing that. Interesting. The nice thing about Facebook is that whoever sells, you can actually look at some of their history, right? See how long they've been around. Instead of just some complete stranger, which, you know. Um, right, who just set up their Facebook account 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Don't know who yeah. they are. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I like being able to do that because I'm a woman who lives alone. and, and yeah. Right. You never know. I want to be safe. I think the voice is muted too, for some reason. I can't hear anybody anymore. I can hear you. Huh. Hi everyone, this is Kim. Hi. So Kevin's um, PC just got... <laughs> Um, I think there was an issue, but he's currently um, turning it on. He's getting an, a different PC and he got a different laptop. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, Technology yeah, turns I should on be us. back in a minute. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Aha. Uh -huh. There he is. I'm back. Back. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. I apologize. Okay, All right. Technology is always fun when it wants to just crash. Yep. All right. I was trying to show you on my phone, right? Right. You can see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Let's try this. All right. Let's go to Facebook. This is what I recommend you do to, to post your items because it's so much easier with your phone. All right, down at the bottom, I'm going to click the little uh, marketplace. If you don't see the marketplace button at the bottom, the three lines on the bottom right, you can click on that and it pulls up a list of all your apps. You just click on marketplace. All right, so because I was looking at these golf carts, it's showing up here. Um, but let's say I want to do with my own listing. So I could click on selling and create a new listing. It's an item. And now it wants photos. So let's say I do photos and I want to take some pictures. So I'm going to do this pen. That's good. And my keyboard, another, another picture, keyboard. Okay, I got a couple pictures. Let's do that. You can take up, up to 10. And this is my uh, desk stuff. We won't really post this. The price is going to be $5. The category is... It did recommend. Did you see it recommends? Uh, let's do desks. Okay. Uh, condition. It's good condition. That's fine. I can do some options. Based on whatever you say the item category is, these fields vary based on that. So this is uh, pen and keyboard. Put your description in. 
Obviously, if it's not required, you can skip over it. You can hide from friends on here as well. And then you hit next. How do you want delivery? You know, they're always trying to sell you on the shipping, but just do local pickup. That's good. Next. And now you can pick your groups and then you publish it. So it's real easy to do from your phone, especially because you're taking pictures on your phone. So they're all right there, which is nice and easy. Okay. Any questions on that? No. Easy, easy, right? Easy peasy. Easy peasy, right. That's right. So, and then, you know, you can still communicate through your phone. So let's back out of this. I don't want to post this pretend thing. Discard. Uh, so when you have your listings, uh, you say, well, how do you uh, edit it? So you can come back into your listings, click on your listings. And if you mark it sold, it'll mark it sold right there. So Facebook's going to let you keep your item out there for about a week, and then it's going to take it off the marketplace. All you have to do is hit uh, relit mark as available again. You, say, you don't have to re-enter the whole thing. Just click mark as available, and it goes live again. It does that to try to keep the marketplace from being cluttered up with stuff that's been abandoned. So just look about every week to make sure it's still listed. And I think they send you an email reminder or notification if it does roll off. Just click mark available again or relist the item. But if it's sold, you click on mark is sold and it says, okay, did you sell it? Where'd you sell it? Uh, I'm not gonna answer. If you sold it on Facebook, it says, did you sell it to this person or that person? And then it asks them to give a review of you, how you were as a seller. All right, so I've taken that one off marketplace now. All right, that's how easy it is. The, um, I'm, I'm still haven't heard back from our guy. Um, so on our phones, there's another messenger, Facebook messenger, and there's a marketplace, right? We, this is where we message Dan, like, is this available in the golf cart? He hasn't responded. That's where you communicate in here with him. All right, now let's look at offer up. Now offer up, you can access from your computer, but you can't list from your computer. It makes you do all your listings from your phone. So you can edit and you can communicate back and forth and you can change in it prices and all that once it's posted, but you can't post on the computer. They want you to use their download their app and use it. It's free. So here's offer up right there. You click on that. You go in here. I'm showing you obviously you're still seeing my are you still seeing my my phone? Yeah, okay. All right. So down here, if I want to post something, I'm gonna click post in the bottom middle. Post. Actually, we're not seeing we're we're seeing the um Publish your listing still from Facebook. Okay, let's see. There we go. Back on the phone now? Yes. Yeah, okay, all right, here's offer up. And down at the bottom, uh, I click on post. It says, okay, you can take a photo, select photos. So let's select those ones I just did. So this one and this one and done. And I can put in office stuff. It looks just like Facebook, really, how it works. Next, it's got category and subcategory, but the subcategory is optional. It takes a look at the picture and it gives you a recommended category, which is nice, or you can pick from something else, but I'll keep it on that. Brands optional, use normal wear, description, uh, office pen and keyboard next price you can say it's you know five dollars firm or not whichever you want next and then again if i just want to keep it local i do that you know if you use offer up shipping they're going to take almost 13 percent so i don't use that i don't recommend that and then you hit post and it goes out there okay so it's real easy to do in here, like if I search golf carts on here, let's see. If I was trying to buy one, right? There's a whole bunch of these guys within 30 miles of where I live. So what's nice about this is you can also see the profile of the person selling here too. It shows you they bought three things, they've sold five things. They get reviews from people who use them, so they respond quickly. These are the other things they've sold. 
So that's the credibility of, of the buyer or the seller. You can see who's buying and selling from you, right? And you can communicate right in here. So this is now a message inside of the app that you can communicate with them. Like, will you take 3,000? Right, you can, you can send that to them. So really easy to do and offer up. Um, that's Facebook and offer up. All right, that's all my information. What specific questions do you guys have? Okay, I'm looking at um, the Facebook Marketplace and I went down to the bottom where it says groups and I click on groups and it says, there are currently no products in your area, check back later. So what, what were you trying to do in groups? I just wanted to see if there were any groups like you showed us. Yeah, okay. Do you, you have to see? have a product first before you can find a group or? No, no, Let's, uh, let me show you how to join a group. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, can you see my Facebook page again? Yes. All right, we're gonna go to, all right, over here, this is the groups icon. See this, a groups right here? Click on groups. Now I could search groups. Let's search for, um, uh, do you have, do you have a, a, a product that you're thinking of? What would be something you're gonna sell? Oh, let's say a bike. What kind of bike? Uh, a 10, 10 or 12 speed, I don't know. Okay, all right. Because <laughs> there's like casual bikes and there's like the bikes I used to race. So I'm, that's why I said No, that. no, no, casual. Casual bikes, okay. Um, <laughs> let's go bicycle marketplace. Let's do that. And that's what we put in. And we're going to search groups. We're going to filter groups. Okay, now I can pick a city too. Like, do I want around me? What What's a big city near you? Um, St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis, Missouri. Right there. All right. All right. Here's a psycho classified discussion in St. Louis. It's got 23,000 people on it. Mm. It's public. So all you do is you click on it. Here's the group. This group does not let you join it, huh? In the world. Maybe I'm already in it, I don't know. Um, usually you can join a group though, that's what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know, this is all new, but I was just trying, I have two computers here so I could do one and see what's kind of, but I'm not that familiar with Facebook either in the first place. So all this is kind of new. Sure. So that's a good point. Maybe you like the idea of what we're talking about, but you don't want to get into all the detail of it. Maybe you ask one of your kids or grandkids to do the work for you and they sell your products and you give them some kind of commission for doing it. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's one. Uh, again, let me see if I can go to St. Louis again. Did I get St. Louis? Ah, Missouri. Here we go. All right, I picked up, well, this one's only got 124. These are vintage bicycles. Mm. And this one. So maybe I'm already a member of this. Oh, I already joined this one. This one I've not joined. All right, so let's, well, I already joined it. That's why you couldn't see it. This is what it looks oh. like if you, have, if you haven't joined it, there's a join button. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So I brought up one I already joined, so that's why it wasn't showing up. So this okay. one, not a big group, there's only 24 in it, but you can join the group. And then this one shows up on your list of Facebook groups that you can post your item in. The ones you've joined will show up in that list. Does that help you? Um, yeah, yeah, because I was looking, I didn't click on that button for groups. I was just looking down the left side and at the yeah. bottom there was a groups and that's yeah. where I got that message. So I was right. looking at the wrong place, so. Yeah, yeah. And okay. how can you tell whether they allow you to post items for sale on the group? Yeah. Where do you look? All right. What do you have a let's say we're doing camera photography and we do groups and um, 
Sometimes you can tell in the description. Like this one's obviously for sale stuff. This one's buy and so you sell. You might have to look at the rules. Yeah, right. So like, let's go. This is a pretty big one. Let's see what this says. All right, so they don't like rude people. That's good. <laughs> uh, yeah. They usually say, like this one, I don't think this is so much about about selling, right? This one looks more about, just sharing what they're learning. Yeah, they're usually yeah, in their okay, rules sure. or in their description, yeah. Plus it's in Dubai. Right, this one's in Dubai. Probably not gonna sell something there. Right. <laughs> I have to come pick it up. Right. <laughs> I mean, you might want to take a trip there, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. What other questions? Anybody else? Ada, were you talking to us? Like you're on mute. I don't know if you're talking to me or somebody else. Ada, you hear me? Oh, you're on mute. Try to unmute. I'm curious, how much is she selling that bit, great big wine glass for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of thirsty. That's that's kind of good right now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my, yeah. Somebody in the notes said they they need that glass. Mm -hmm. I don't see a price. Uh, this was this was this is not in a group. This is like a neighborhood group, I think. I don't think it was a for sale thing. Can you show again how to add your groups to you, what you're selling? Say it again. Can you show again how to add your groups to what you're selling? Uh, how to how to join the groups? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me go to. Um, Let's go to marketplace and my listings. Let's go to your account. Here's my listings. So let's go into these three dots right here. And I want to edit or view listing. How oh, can I edit? I want to edit it. Click it. Oh, this one's been already market sold. I can't edit something that's already sold. All right, so it's market available. All right, it's available now. Now I can edit it. When I'm in edit, I can just go through the process again, change anything I want. Hit next. Next on delivery. It's next. No. Oh, list to more places. All right, just out here. Once it's already created, I can. it's listed automatically in Marketplace. If I want to list it to more than one, I can click list to more places. And then it opens up the groups that I've already joined that allow you to sell things in. So if you don't have groups, it will only show in the Marketplace in general? That's right, yeah. They might have, they might have some suggested groups you could join. They've added that where you can kind of click on those if you like any of those. Or you go, you go back out, you know, close this, go back into groups, join the groups, and then go back into marketplace, edit that item, and then join and attach it to that group. You can always edit it. List in more places, that's where you put in the groups. And again, they'll let you put it up to 20. All right. Any other questions? Well, Kevin, you're my favorite Get Set Up class. I learned a lot. Well, good. That's so great to hear. I asked you before class what your favorite was, and now I'm your favorite. Well, what are You're my favorite. 
<laughs> We're good. Yeah, I, uh, I'll send out notes on this uh, from the slides I sent. I'll send notes to you, let you guys get, uh, if you get a chance to get feedback on the class, you can do that. That's always appreciated. I teach a lot of classes. Love to see you in other classes I teach. We've got lots of great guides and about 400 classes a week we offer. So um, it's been a joy having you guys in class and I hope to see you guys around in future classes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good afternoon. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.